everyone. I'm Ranjana Kishore. I'm a curator and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the fifth webinar in our ongoing webinar series. In today's webinar, uh, my colleague Faye Rogers will give an overview of, of Parasite Biomart, uh, one of our data mining tools. Um, I just want to mention a couple of things before we begin. The presentation itself will take about 30 to 40 minutes, followed by a 20 minute Q&A session. Uh, note that we'll be muting all, um, all of you during the presentation. Um, feel free to type questions into the chat during the presentation. Our chat moderators, Daniela Rossidi and Karen Yuk will collect the questions and these will get answered um, at the end of the presentation. Um, the webinar itself, including the Q&A, will be recorded and we will post this at a later date and we'll announce that on our blog. As always, if you have questions that you feel did not get answered or you need further clarification, please contact us at, um, via email at help at wormbase.org. Again, help at wormbase.org. So again, thank you for joining us. We'll go ahead and get started. Faye, are you ready to begin? Uh, yes, I think so. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, we can see that, Faye. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Thank you, Ranjana, for the introduction. Um, so as Ranjana said, my name's Faye. Um, I work for Worm-Based Parasite. And the bulk of my talk today is going to be about um, data mining using our Biomart tool. But I'm just going to start um, with a, a brief introduction to Wormbase Parasite and how we relate to Wormbase or Wormbase Central, as I'll refer to it, um, and what the difference between the two websites is. Um, so the main, main take home difference is that Wormbase Parasite focuses on species breadth as opposed to curational depth. Um, and that's illustrated here by this list of things we do and things we don't do, we as in Wormbase Parasite. Um, so I'll start with the things we do. Um, first of all, we host both nematodes and flatworms, um, so two different phyla of worms. Um, and we're all about high throughput genomics. So we, um, we aim to process and present data in a consistent and accessible way and to bring in high throughput data sets. So at the moment, um, this is mostly RNA-seq data, but we also have some variation data sets and um, we're looking into bringing in some um, high throughput RNAi screens as well in the future. Um, as you can see in the list of things we don't do, one of the things we don't do in the main is gene model curation, um, but we are interested in facilitating curation by interested uh, communities, so for example by providing Apollo instances, um, if any parasitic worm communities out there are interested in that. Um, so the major thing that we don't do compared to worm based is literature curation. Um, and in the main, like I said, um, we don't do gene model curation, but there are some exceptions to both of those, um, which are these worms that I've listed um, at the bottom of the slide here, um, which have got high quality genomes. Um, and so they're part of the main worm-based site. And um, so they're parasitic worms that are part of the main worm-based site. Um, the final thing that we don't do is uh, limit ourselves to parasitic worms, despite the name. So we actually have quite a lot of um, free living worms in worm-based parasite that are not in worm-based central. Um, so here is an overview of the different analyses that we run and where we get the data from. Um, so we take, as I said, um, our genomes and the primary annotation, and by primary annotation, I mean um, protein coding gene models. We take those um, directly from the research community, um, with the exception of the genomes that are in Wormbase, which we take uh, from Wormbase Central. Uh, I should add just as a side note that um, our worm-based parasite and the worm-based release cycles um, are not perfectly aligned. So the data that we show in worm-based parasite is often a few releases behind what's in um, the worm-based central website, but you can see which release we're aligned to by um, looking on the website, the, the small banner at the top of the page um, shows which worm-based release uh, our data is from. Uh, okay, so we take all of those genomes and those protein sequences, or, um, gene models, um, and we run a bunch of analyses across them. And these are the things that we do. Um, so we predict protein domains, uh, annotate go terms, annotate repeats, annotate non-coding RNAs. Um, we, as I said, align publicly available RNA-seq data and do a process of linking all of our IDs to external databases so that we can bring in uh, additional analyses from external databases um, where we can. We also um, run a big comparative analysis. So um, we build gene trees um, of all of our all of our proteins, 
in the release, um, plus a few comparator species. And we use those to predict orthologs and paralogs. Um, and we do that using the ensemble compara method. Um, so then we take that data and we make that available um, in various ways. So obviously we have a website, um, every gene, every species has got a page. And um, we have a JBrowse instance for every genome that we host. We produce various tools, uh, so BLAST, VEP, Biomart's the one I'm going to be talking about most today. Um, you can also access our data through a REST API, and we make it available too to a few external collaborators who produce their own tools um, using worm-based parasite data. So a nice example of that is G-Profiler. Um, so they take uh, worm-based parasite annotations and Go annotations, and their tool allows you to do uh, gene set enrichment using worm-based parasite data. So this is where we're at at the moment at release 15. Um, so uh, this should sum up to 161 species um, across the nematodes and the flatworms. And I'll just point out that um, as part of these clade five nematodes, we've got 21 um, Cenerobdite species and some of those are not in one base central. Okay. Um, so the main thrust of this talk is about querying uh, worm based parasite data. And I'm going to talk entirely about um, using Biomart to do that through uh, the Biomart web interface. But just to mention before I get into that, that there are other ways um, to access the Biomart database. So um, if anybody uses R, um, you can access it through the Biomart package, which is a bioconductor package. And there's also a Perl API. Um, so you can make queries using um, Perl scripts. Um, and then separate from Biomart, you can also access worm-based parasite data through a REST API. Okay. Then I'm going to focus um, for the rest of the talk, um, as I said, on Biomart. So what is Biomart? It's a very powerful tool uh, for making custom data queries without any programming knowledge or any understanding of the underlying database. Um, so there are really only two things um, you need to get started with making a Biomart query, um, and that is um, a set of filters and a set of attributes, where filters are a set of genes you want to restrict your query to, and attributes are the data uh, that you want to get out about those genes. Um, so Biomart is, is gene-centric. You are essentially always asking um, something about a list of genes, but you don't necessarily need to come in with a known list of genes. You can set your filter for example, to be a certain genome, in which case you're asking about all of the genes in that genome, or a certain genomic region or scaffold, so all of the genes on that scaffold. Or of course, you can have a list of gene IDs, or you can also query on um, properties of a gene. So for example, I'm interested in all genes that are annotated with a certain protein domain that I'm interested in, or a given go term that I'm interested in. Um, or similarly, um, give me all of the genes that have got an orthologue um, in a given species. Um, and then hopefully the examples I'm going to show you um, will illustrate some of the attributes that you can get out of Biomart, but here are just a few examples. So things like um, IDs, uh, so as protein stable IDs, uniprot IDs, um, ID conversion is quite a common use case for Biomart. Um, you can also retrieve sequence data. I said cDNA sequence here, but there are, you can get protein, um, DNA, whatever you want. Um, protein domains and also um, the uh, orthologue IDs, a percentage identity and other attributes like that. Okay, so I think this is probably best, exam um, best illustrated by going through some examples. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. So I have three worked examples um, to walk you through with screenshots. Um, and then if there are any questions at the end, we'll, we can go through and do some uh, live examples. Okay. Um, so the first example I have um, is using Biomart to retrieve protein domains um, of all genes in a list. So you're coming at it with a list of gene IDs. Okay, so this is the worm-based parasite homepage and to access Biomart, um, you've got a couple of options here, the widget or uh, clicking, clicking in the ribbon at the top. And this is what Biomart looks like when you first land on it. So the things I'll point out are um, this ribbon down the left-hand side. So this is where you set your queries um, and your, in your output attributes. So these are the two um, options you use to navigate mostly. Um, and when we first land, um, these are the various um, filter options that we have. Okay. So just by way of illustration, um, at the moment we've not set any filters. Um, and if I were to click count at the top here, I would see um, all of the genes that I'm, I'm querying against, um, which in this case is all of the genes in the whole database, which is more than four and a half million genes. So I'm not going to do that, obviously. We're going to set some filters. 
Um, so in this example, I'm coming in with a gene list. Um, so I'm going to select uh, the gene option here. Um, and as you can see here, I've got a box where I can paste in my list of genes. So um, that's what I would do. In this case, um, homunculus contortus genes. Um, so one thing I want to point out, which is um, the first possible gotcha, um, is that, so in this case, these, these gene IDs that I'm coming in with, they are gene stable IDs. But if I had instead pasted a list of gene names or worm-based sequence names, and I didn't tell Biomark that that's what I'm providing it with, then I wouldn't get any results. Um, so a handy check before you go on to ask for any attributes or add any more filters is just to click count and make sure that um, Biomart has recognized your gene IDs as, as what you say they are. So in this case, I can see that uh, Biomart knows I've got 18 genes that I'm searching with. Okay. Um, so that was a simple filter in this case. Um, and now I'm gonna go on to set uh, my output attributes. So I've, I've clicked on the attributes um, option here to take me to the attributes page. You can see I've got two main options, either to create a data table or to retrieve sequences. Um, so this example um, I'm gonna show you is creating a data table. And these are the various types of attributes that we can ask for. Um, so we're interested in protein domains. As you can see here, I've got two options for protein domains. Um, other and interpro. Um, and just to show you what they look like. So if we go into other protein domains, um, we can see um, all of these various different uh, protein signature databases coming up as options. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is actually just select interpro because interpro includes all of these different um, databases. If I were interested in just PFAM, for example, then I would select just PFAM. Um, the exception to, to that is these ones at the bottom, um, transmembrane, um, signal P and N coils. So they're not part of Interpro. So if you're interested in those, you have to select them individually. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is select um, Interpro ID and Interpro short description. And then that's my filters, that's my attributes and I will preview my results. Okay, um, and I get um, a nice little table like this to look at the first few rows of results. Um, so the other thing that I want to point out is another potential gotcha is um, that we have in our table um, these uh, five lines here, exactly the same rows um, being repeated five times. So to understand a little bit more about where that's coming from, we can go back and add more um, attributes to our output. And in this case, um, I've gone back and added start position and end position of my interpro protein domains. And then I go back to my results and I can see that they've been added to my query. Um, and you can see that these repeating lines, um, although they were identical in those first few columns that we saw when we add the, the position, so where the domain is along the protein sequence, they're all different. So that sort of um, explains why this, this line was repeated. And then if we want to visualize that a little bit more, we can click on the gene stable ID in the table. And that'll take us outside of Biomart for a moment. Um, and we can click through to visualize the protein domains on the sequence. So here I've landed on the, uh, the gene page for that gene, and I'm gonna click through to the transcript page, and then um, click on the protein summary option here on the left-hand side, and it may be a little bit too small to see, um, but you can see I have um, five of these peptidase C1 domains, C1A domains. Um, and they're coming from uh, three of the different Interpro member databases. So SMART, PRINCE and PFAM. So that, that explains where that's coming from. Um, of course, if you don't care about that, um, you can just ask for unique results. Um, and as you can see now, we only have the one line there when I've taken away the, um, the coordinates. Okay, so um, when, we want, when we're ready to explore our full results table, um, we'll use these options at the top here. Um, so, TSV is the default file format. You can choose a few others. Um, a handy thing to know about is if you're doing quite a big query and the interface is timing out on you, um, then you can ask for your results to be sent to you by email. Um, and that's a, often a good way to get around that issue. So I'm gonna walk through now um, a slightly more complicated example where we're building up um, the query by adding more and more filters. Um, so we want to use Biomart to retrieve schistosome and manzanai genes from the ZW chromosome that have got an ortholog in schistosoma japonicum and schistosoma hematobium. 
and we want to return um, the gene IDs from all three of those species. Okay, so again, back to the uh, filters page. Um, now, in this case, I'm going to add a species filter um, because I want the chromosome that I'm interested in is Inchisosoma lanthanae. Um, obviously, in this example, I would just select uh, one species, but one of the nice things about Parasite Biomart is that um, you can do multi-species queries, so I would be able to select multiple species here, and I could also browse the taxonomy tree and select everything below a certain node in the tree. So I select my genome, um, and now I need to specify um, the genomic region, um, by which we mean the scaffold that we're, um, that we're interested in. Um, now, this is another place where you need to be quite careful because um, this is a free text box, so you have to get the text exactly right um, with the name of the scaffold that you're interested in. If you have a typo or something, then again, you'll get zero results because um, the scaffold won't be recognised. Um, so again, I would recommend before you go on to do anything else, add any more filters or attributes, um, just count to make sure that, um, that what you've written there has been recognised. So here we can see we've got 2,249 uh, genes on that scaffold. Okay, um, and now we need to add some homology filters. So we are interested in genes that have got an ortholog in hematobium and eponychum. So if I click on the homology um, filter, I've got two options here, either to restrict to genes that do have orthologs in a species that I select or that do not have orthologs in a species that I select. So I'm going to choose here uh, on my two species. And again, just to note here that um, these filters are um, additive. So we're looking here for a gene that has got an ortholog in both hematobium and japonicum, not or. Okay. Um, and again, always good to count as you go along and build up your, your query. Um, so the number of genes that fulfill those criteria has gone down as we'd expect. Okay. Um, now I've not added any output attributes at this point and I just wanted to show you what you see um, when you preview the results. So we have here just a list of schistosome and mantenai, um gene IDs. That's because we've, um, we've filtered so we've said give me these uh, Mantenai gene IDs that fulfill these criteria, but we've not yet asked for the hematobium and japonicum gene IDs in the output. So we have to set the attributes, the output attributes before, um, before we get that data as well. So I'll go and do that now by selecting the output attributes. And again, we've got an option here um, to add orthologs. So if I click to that, um, and then you get this, um, this little uh, menu of options for every single species that we have. So I'd scroll down to find the species I'm interested in. Um, in this case, I'm just selecting the gene stable ID. But as you can see, you can also get um, things like homology type, um, which is one to one, one to many, etc. And the percentage identity, um, either with respect to the schistosoma matsunai gene or the schistosoma hematobium, in this case, gene. Um, as well as positional information. Um, and then I will go through and click for my results. And again, um, I have a table that's ready to download. Um, so just another thing to point out here. Um, in this case, um, we can see in this table, one of our genes has got um, obviously a, a one-to-many relationship with schistosoma hematobium. So it's got two orthologs of hematobium. So um, this gene has been repeated here. Um, and this, uh, the japonicum gene has also um, been returned both times. Um, so that's just something to be aware of when you're, when you're processing the results of this kind of query. Um, and when you're building up various filters and attributes like this, tables can get um, quite big. So just to be careful with the, exactly what data you're returning. Yeah, and then uh, we'll download results in the same way. Okay. Um, so the final example that I have pre-prepared is um, uh, retrieving sequence data. And so in this case, um, um, generating a protein FAST file from a list of gene IDs. Okay, um, so um, you'd set your filters in exactly the same way. Um, select gene, paste in your, your ID list. 
Um, but then um, instead of creating a data table, we would go to retrieve sequences here. Um, and here you can see the various types of sequence that you can retrieve. Um, so I've gone for peptide here, um, but there are lots of different options. And one of the popular ones um, that you can do with, with Biomart is choosing flanking sequence and selecting um, how many, so customizing how many base pairs of flank you actually want. That's quite nice. Um, you can also do things like um, ask for exon sequences and then get um, a faster file with um, a different faster entry for every exon. And you can, of course, customize um, the information that you get in the headers as well, um, as you can see here. So I would then preview my results and um, again, go, go on to download the faster file. So there were just um, three examples um, of the sorts of sorts of data you can get. Um, but there's, um, it, as I said, it's, um, there are many different types of data you can retrieve with Biomart. So you can, as I mentioned, um, convert between identifier types, um, retrieve protein domains, retrieve go terms, um, retrieve genomic coordinates, generate sequence files um, of protein, cDNA, UTR, UTR uh, flanking sequence. Um, or equally retrieve a list of genes um, that have got a given domain or a go term that you're interested in, that do or do not have orthologs in a certain species or are within a certain genomic region. Um, I'd be happy to, to try and demonstrate some examples if anybody has any use cases they'd like to see. Okay. Um, so just to point out that um, we have got some help, uh, some um, documentation on the website and um, you can find the documentation pages here. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can either email the, work, the main Wormbase help desk, um, help at wormbase.org, um, or go straight to parasite help at sanger.ac.uk. So this will be picked up by parasite staff. Um, and this is the whole Wormbase team. Um, those of us in italics are the ones who work on Wormbase Parasite, so at EBI and Sanger Institute. Um, and yes, thank you very much. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Faye. That was a great overview. Uh, we don't have any questions in the chat as of now. Um, mm -hmm. so we can wait a couple of minutes to give the participants the opportunity to type the, um, the questions. Sure. I chance, participants. <laughs> and so, um, okay, uh, we got one. Can you search genomology between any species within the database? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Sorry, that was a very short answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I can go and um, uh, and demonstrate. Um, so, can you see? Can you see my uh, web the web page now? One based parasite. Am I sharing still? Yes. Yes. Cool. Just checking. I wasn't just sharing a tab. Um, um, so yes, you can. So when you're coming in here to um, select the uh, filters. Um, these are all of the genomes that we have. Um, so yes, everything is included in Biomart. Um, and then again, selecting um, outputs. If I go down here, we have orthologs in um, all the species that we have, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I was talking to myself. So thank you, Faye. Uh, there was a follow-up question from Alejandra. Uh, she asks, uh, how can she obtain expression data for a list of genes? Is it possible for one species or for various species? Um, so unfortunately, you can't get expression data in Biomart. Um, but I can show you how to find it on, on the Wormbase Parasite website. Um, so. Um, maybe I can use just Soma and I as an example. I'm not sure which species you're interested in, but I would, um, there are two ways to access this data really. So I'm gonna go to the genome page for this genome. Um, so the first way is through JBrowse. So if I go to JBrowse, uh, and then if I select tracks, 
Um, so we have um, aligned publicly available RNA-seq data and it's available um, as, a, as a wiggle track on JBrowse um, with as much metadata as we can extract. So um, for example, these are, um, this is a developmental stage experiment. If I go back to the browser and I can um, see the data against the genome there. Um, the other way is if I go back to the genome page um, to go to the gene expression studies page. Um, and here we have um, done some automated analyses of, of um, a subset of, um, of the experiments that are available. Um, so each experiment has got a section like this where we've extracted the experimental design um, and you can download um, counts per run. Um, so these have been calculated using HTSeq, I believe. And for some experiments, um, we've computed differential expression um, between, um, between conditions when there are enough replicates and things um, using DSeq2. So you can also download the results of that here. Great, thank you, Faye. Alejandra, answer your questions. You can just type yes or no in the chat if you have. Okay, great. Um, we'll still give a couple of minutes uh, for participants to type in questions. And because there's warm based stuff on the call, if you have other um, generic warm based questions or micro publication questions, uh, uh, we can answer those too since we got um, some time. So, uh, Daniela, can we run one poll while people are typing or thinking about, like, can we can, can we ask our audience some question about uh, the priority they do? Absolutely, when so you can go ahead and uh, start the polling. So I'm going to launch a poll. Um, please let us know uh, which data types you most frequently retrieve from Biomart. That will help us uh, to know like uh, how how people use our data. I'm going to run the poll for one minute. So you know while you answer the poll, you can also you can also type your questions if you have any questions for one base. Okay, I'm end the poll and I'm sharing the results with you. <laughs> Thank you uh, for voting. And and I have another poll to run uh, um, about, uh, well, another about the one base, uh, the features of the biomass parasite. So it's another one minute poll. Like, please let us know we have quite a few different features in our tools and we know how frequent the people use them. Thank you for voting. And here is the result uh, of this poll. Um, so, uh, and, and while we're waiting for you to have more questions, <laughs> I hope you don't mind uh, that ask another poll. I, that's a question I, I really want to find out. Uh, so I want to know uh, how satisfied are people with the release cycle of worm base? 
Uh, we currently have five release site, uh, five releases per year, and uh, our developing team have been wondering, like, what will happen if we have less release uh, each year? How will they? How will that affect your research? If we have like a three release per year or something. When it might be uh, useful to explain what a release is. Oh yeah, so like a uh, you know, uh, every time we have a re Wormbase, we do not update our data until we have a new release. So for example, if a new paper is published uh, this month, January, and uh, it's going to take like a uh, two months to get into our database, then maybe another two months until they appear in our website. So. So like, because it's a lot of work for us to assemble all the data together. And at the same time, we are actually uh, migrating to the Alliance of Genome Resource. Um, and maybe uh, Faye can show the website later if you're not familiar with that. So um, yeah, like, uh, you know, we were say, wondering if we should have less release and uh, put more effort on migrating to the Alliance or like uh, developing other tools. So uh, I saw five people voted and I'm going to end the poll here. And thank you very much for telling us that that has no impact on you. That, that is very, very important for us to know, although this is a small sample size. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so uh, I okay. think there's another question so we can come yeah. back to the Q and A. Thank you. Thank you, Wen. And thanks everyone to particip for participating to the poll. Uh, so there, are, there's a question from Ray Hong. Uh, what's the best way to use Biomart to define a novel gene protein that exists in one genus but not in other in the database? So I mean, I, I I imagine that what you would want to do there is maybe retrieve um, protein domains and go terms that have been annotated to that gene. Um, or possibly, and also maybe know in which other species it has got um, orthologs. So um, it's hard to do that without a gene ID, <laughs> um, but I can um, show you the output attributes that I might start looking at. Um, so we can retrieve um, gene ontology, um, accessions and names. Um, Interpro domains also can be very informative. Um, and I would go about retrieving um, orthologs in the same way that I showed previously. Um, and you might then want to go and see which go terms and domains are associated with those orthologs that you've retrieved, um, which I think you would have to do in two separate queries. But um, maybe some of the worm-based folk might have some other ideas of how you could approach that. I know Wormbase has got much richer data than Wormbase Parasite for that kind of thing. Any Wormbase curator wants to add on what they described? Okay. It doesn't seem the case. Ray, if you have um, follow-up questions, you can write to help desk. Maybe some other curator that is not attending the call has an answer for you. Um, yep. So uh, another question from uh, Jenny Heppert. Uh, first of all, she says, great talk, Faye. And uh, she's always wondered, and maybe you know, how orthology is determined across genomes and how strict is the determination? So we use the um, ensemble comparer method. Um, I can give you a bit of an overview, but um, I would suggest um, looking at the ensemble comparer documentation for a more thorough answer. Um, it starts with HMM searches um, against, um, I think the library is based on the Panther database, and that um, is initially classifying every protein sequence um, into a family. Um, and then anything that doesn't get classified into a family by that process goes into, um, is blasted all against all um, to try and put everything into a family. Um, and then protein trees are made um, by doing all against all alignments um, within each family. 
Um, I think that's the best I can do off the top of my head, but I would recommend um, looking up Ensemble Compara and then you'll get a much better explanation. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> and it's happy. You can wait another couple of minutes to have more questions coming in. So while we wait, can I run another poll? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure, gone. When? Uh, so I want to know how often people use uh, alliance uh, of genome resource. So um, you probably have heard like a one base SGD. Um, and other mod database, we are merging into one big platform called Alliance of Genome Resource. And we expect that Wormbase will be completely integrated into the Alliance within two years. So it's important for us to know whether our users are prepared for that. Like, you know, the Alliance website is already there. And, and so, so like, uh, yeah, please let us know whether you, 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 you are aware of this and whether you have used it. And hopefully this will prompt you to go take a look at alliancegenome.org. Yeah, can, can someone type into the chat box, like uh, the website, Alliance of Genome, or maybe uh, Faye can show the website. Uh, I can certainly go there, but I'm not the right person to, um... <laughs> You're displaying it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah. Is that is it the best? So most yeah. of people have not used yep. Alliance. So please give it a try. Uh, it's a really nice website. You can see all species there. Yeah. So here's the website of the Alliance. So I think we got some more questions. Uh, Danielle, I think we can go, come, go back to Q&A. Yeah. Yes. So uh, still from Alejandra, how often are the different genomes versions for the different species updated? Um, we don't really have a, a schedule. It depends um, on when new assemblies are produced. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're completely dependent on um, somebody producing a, a new assembly. Um, it's not something that we do. Thank you, Faye. Um, so maybe, Faye, if you go up on the search bar for uh, Alliance website and you type in C. Uh, elegans um, gene like EGL1, E-G-L1, and then hit enter. Um. Um, you're selecting for disease. So oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so do gene. And then click on the gene itself. Uh, so what you can see here is a gene summary for EGO1. This is information that is pulled directly from Wormbase and is integrated already in the Alliance uh, uh, genome website. Uh, the, the power of the Alliance is that you can find comparisons between different species. Uh, so, for instance, if you go on, you have these widgets on the left hand side, like a summary, which includes the automated gene description. This is also visible in warm base, so you might be familiar. And then you have orthology function, which uh, includes uh, gene ontology annotations. Uh, but then uh, you, you have many, uh, many widgets with lots of data. Uh, and for example, Faye, if you click on expression, then uh, you can see that um, you have the gene expression results summarized uh, into, into a, a ribbon. Uh, and then if you, I think that if you scroll up a little bit, and then maybe this is not the best example, but click on compare orthologic genes and uh, uh, the stringency click on the uh, agency and then uh, like uh, moderate, you would, you would be able to see gene expression result also on uh, additional 
species. Oops. That was probably not the best example. <laughs> I'm gonna look up one myself um, and, uh, and we'll let you know. But uh, please um, play around with the Alliance uh, um, website and uh, you can send feedback directly to us so that we would know what what do you think about it and how we can improve so um, it's uh, it's great information for us i'm looking up for um better Example. Okay, so if you type, um, say, CWN1. Do you want to share instead, uh, Daniela? You might be better positioned to <laughs> demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, that cool. works. Okay, uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so I typed in the gene name CWN1 and what I wanted to show you is in the expression uh, widget that you see also the ortholog uh, gene expression summary. So basically you can see the mouse, this is an ortholog of wind 4 so you can uh, have a bird's eye view on what's the expression in other species like in Drosophila, in zebrafish, so these are the Abbreviation is for Daniorerio and Ratus Norvegicus. So uh, you, it's very useful for comparative um, purposes. And um, yeah, so you can browse all the, um, all the widgets, see if there have been uh, disease associations, annotations uh, uh, for human and for other organisms. Uh, uh, phenotypes, uh, um, mo lots of these links uh, are still pointing to uh, worm base, where is the primary source. Uh, so you can have more information on the worm base site itself. But the idea is to migrate all the data to Alliance uh, um, to have this integrative view. So please uh, go to Alliance Genome and also uh, advertise with your colleagues uh, and send us feedback. We'll have more polls about that probably right when. <laughs> okay, um, we'll still wait a couple of minutes to give everyone a chance to ask last minute questions. Otherwise I think we can then uh, uh, close this uh, webinar. Thank you everyone for participating. This is uh, useful for us as well. Okay, we have another question from Jenny. Uh, how does one submit RNA-seq data for inclusion in a parasite page? Glad you asked. Um, so actually you don't submit the data directly to us. Um, you need to submit it to the sequence archives. Um, so to um, ENA or um, NCBI, um, and we retrieve it from there. Um, so we, our, our pipeline works by retrieving data from um, from the archives, uh, and we we can't do anything with stuff that's sent directly to us. Um, so yeah, to the to the sequence archives, please. Right. Welcome. And by the way, we will have a, I will give a talk about high throughput data in March. So, so by that, hopefully by that time, we have more information about how can people use uh, RNA seq data in one base and browse them. Cool. If there are no more questions, shall we uh, close the meeting? I think okay. so. Great. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. I hope it was useful. And, uh, and when do you know when the next webinar is? We could um, announce. 
uh, when uh, do you have the information at hand of the next webinar? Uh, it's on the website of Wormbase. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, our next webinar is uh, February 20th. Uh, on the, well, it's February. It's February uh, 22, uh, 22nd about data mining strategies and workflows. So that would be a very useful one. I think Todd Harris will give the talk. Um, yeah, it, all the information are on Wormbase uh, website. Uh, under the meeting section, we have the a list of webinar date and topic, and uh, you can also watch the video, uh, access a video from there, and and also like uh, uh, we publish the the slides for these talks. I think I should also put the slides slide links on the website. I will do that after the meeting. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.